Let's take a look at implicit differentiation. Now, the first problem is not implicit differentiation. Oh, that's my cat. You want to do some calculus too? Yeah. Yeah, we're helping a bunch of students learn to do implicit differentiation, huh? Well, I'm trying to help them, and you're trying to help me not help them. That's teamwork. So this first problem is not actually implicit differentiation. But the thing I want to mention about this first problem is that when we take the derivative of y equals x cubed, we start by taking the derivative on both sides, like this. And on the left hand side, we have y prime, which is equal to dy dx, and this is the quantity that we want. On the right hand side, we have, typically you would say, 3x squared. But there's actually an implicit chain rule involved in the calculation of this derivative times x prime. x prime though is 1 and so this ends up being 3x squared. Now in general when we have y cubed and we want to take the derivative with respect to x this is 3y squared and then here we take the derivative of this term by chain rule and it becomes times y prime. Another example, if we had e to the y and we want to take the derivative with respect to x, it's e to the y times y prime. Similarly, for other functions involving the chain rule, like the sine of y, take the derivative, it would be the cosine of y times y prime. So these are all examples of implicit differentiation problems where the term we're trying to solve for y prime emerges as a consequence of the chain rule and that will be a theme in all of these problems. Let's solve the second example y squared plus x cubed equals 1. Now in every implicit differentiation problem your reflexive action should be take the derivative with respect to x on both sides. So this would look like d dx of y squared plus x cubed equals d dx of one. This should be like a reflexive response. Apply the derivative to both sides of the equation. Now on the right hand side, this derivative is zero. On the left hand side, we get two y times y prime plus three x squared, and you could think times x prime equals zero. This term is what we want to algebraically solve for in this equation, and this term is 1, the derivative of x prime. So what we get is 2y times y prime is equal to, bring this to this side of the equation, minus 3x squared, divide both sides by 2y, and you have y prime equals minus 3x squared divided by 2y. The next example is a little bit harder. Here we have x cubed plus y cubed is equal to x times y. Now again, our reflexive action when given an implicit differentiation problem is to take the derivative with respect to x on both sides. Now we have to distribute this derivative across the sum of terms. This will give us 3x squared in the case of ddx of x cubed. And here in the case of the derivative of y cubed, 3y squared times y prime. Now this term is a little more complicated. We have to use the product rule. And so just like always, we say xy plus xy, throw the derivative on the first term of the sum and then the derivative on the second term. The derivative here of x is one and the derivative here of y is y prime and that's the term that we're interested in. We want to solve this equation for y prime. So we have 3y squared times y prime equals y plus xy prime. Now our objective is to isolate this term. The question should really say, find y prime. And so we're going to solve this equation for y prime. Now standard practice would be to take all the terms with y prime, put them on one side of the equation, the terms without y prime, put them on the other. It doesn't matter which side you move them to, just pick a side. So I'll use 3x squared minus y, this term and this term on the left hand side, 
And on the right hand side, I have x y prime minus 3y squared y prime. Then factor, so x minus 3y squared times y prime, and then divide by this coefficient to isolate y prime. So you get 3x squared minus y divided by x minus 3y squared is equal to y prime. Now, if you had put the terms of y prime on this side of the equation, then the answer you might have gotten would be the negative of this one. It would be uh, y prime is equal to negative 3x squared plus y divided by negative x plus 3y squared. And notice that this is this answer where you multiply by negative 1, divide by negative 1, and this is actually just multiplication by 1. Now this problem 4 is a tough problem and kind of unusual in that I made this x to the 8th y cubed is the sine of x times y. And I thought it would be nice to introduce an exponential function as well. So let's go ahead and at this time add e to the y squared to see how that affects things. So plus e to the y squared. Now, again, we want to solve for y prime. So really that's a feature of all of these problems. Solve for y prime. And our reflexive action is take d dx on both sides in this equation. So we have d dx of x cubed, or sorry, x to the eighth times y cubed is equal to d dx of the sine of xy plus e to the y squared. Now here we have a product rule between this term and this term. So this is going to be 8x to the seventh y cubed plus x to the eighth times three y squared y prime. Notice here, the chain rule gives us the y prime term that we're trying to solve for. On this side, we have the cosine of x, y, and then by the chain rule, we need to take the derivative of this term by the product rule. So this will be times x, y prime, and here we have the derivative of e to the u is e to the u u prime. So this will be plus e to the y squared times y squared prime. So we still have derivatives to compute here by the product rule and here, which will be 2y y prime. The left hand side is already complete. So we have 8x to the seventh y cubed plus x to the eighth times three y squared y prime is equal to the cosine of x times y. And then here by the product rule, we have y plus x y prime plus e to the y squared times two y. And then one more chain rule for this last term here times y prime. That's a very easy one to miss. And now we have to solve this equation algebraically for y prime, y prime, and y prime. I'm going to show you the way I think about this. Basically, I'm looking at the coefficients of all of my y prime terms. So I have y prime here, the coefficient, and I have this coefficient on this y prime, and I have this coefficient on this y prime. So if I put all those on the left hand side of the equation, basically what I'm working with is y prime times the quantity, this coefficient, x to the eighth times three y squared. That's this first term. Here I have cosine xy times x. So that's going to be minus x times cosine of xy. And then here I have my last term brought to the left hand side is minus e to the y squared times 2y. And that's all of the terms underlined in pink here with the two terms from the right hand side of the equation being introduced with the minus sign. What goes on to the other side of the equation are the remaining terms, which is this term and this term, which has the same coefficient here, cosine. And that's it, just those two terms. So on the right hand side, we'll have equals. Now if this goes to this side of the equation with a negative sign negative eight x to the seventh y cubed 
And then here, this term is going to be minus the cosine. Uh, excuse me. This already has this is already on the right side of the equation. So plus cosine of x y times y. And then our last step is to divide this whole term by this one, and we get y prime by itself. Y prime is minus 8x to the seventh y cubed plus the cosine of xy times y, and this whole thing divided by this coefficient. So x to the eighth times 3y squared minus x times the cosine of xy minus e to the y squared times 2y. Now I wasn't expecting to go into nature on this example, but I do reckon that this example is about as hard of a problem as you might see. And this is really uh, a great white shark, right? See there its teeth, and here's the shark, and the eye, and the nose, and the fin, and it's like, rawr, math. Okay, that last example we did was pretty much unreasonably difficult. The good news is that if you can handle this problem that we just did, you can probably handle just about anything that you might see on a test in high school or in college. Now, this problem is a little bit more reasonable. x cubed plus y cubed square root is equal to x squared minus y cubed. And this is implicit differentiation and we want to find y prime. So we do what we always do. We take ddx on both sides. Now on the left hand side, we have from first the power rule and the chain rule, one half x cubed plus y cubed to the minus one half times x cubed plus y cubed prime. And on the right hand side, we have two x minus three y squared y prime. So this side's easy to differentiate. This side, we still have a little bit of work to do, but it's not the most difficult part of the problem yet. One half x cubed plus y cubed to the minus one half power. And then this derivative is three x squared plus three y squared times y prime. On this side, two x minus three y squared y prime. And now we want to solve for y prime. So we have to algebraically put the two y primes on one side of the equation, factor and then divide. So to put the two y primes on one side of the equation, let's say this is uh, y prime times one over two root x cubed plus y cubed times three y squared. So this term here is this term here on the left side of the equation. And then let's bring this term to the left-hand side of the equation also, so plus three y squared. And now this term is this one, brought to the left-hand side and already factored. On the right-hand side of the equation is the term that's already there, two x, and then the product of this coefficient with this term here. So that will be minus three x squared divided by two times the square root of x cubed plus y cubed. And now notice I brought this term to the denominator right here. The last step is to divide this whole term to the right hand side to get the final answer, which is y prime equals two x minus three x squared divided by two root x cubed plus y cubed divided by this whole term, one over two root x cubed plus y cubed times three y squared plus three y squared, and the whole thing like this. It's very important when you're writing the solution that you clearly identify the fractions. So here we have one term over another term, this term has a fraction, and this term has a fraction. If you wanna get rid of these fractions, you can multiply the numerator and denominator by this term here. So what it would look like then is 
times 2 root x cubed plus y cubed divided by 2 root x cubed plus y cubed. So you have multiplication by 1. And this term will cancel with this term and this term and end up involved in both these terms. So you would distribute this to this term and this term. And similarly here to both these two terms. And you could get arguably a more simplified expression. 4x times root x cubed plus y cubed minus 3x squared divided by 3y squared plus 3y squared times 2. I uh, probably should have made this a 6, but I'll just put times 2 root x cubed plus y cubed. Now, it's not necessary to put it in one form or another, but you should probably know how to go from one form to another so that you can compare solutions with the back of the book, or in case your teacher wants you to do it in one form or another, it's good to be able to know how to go from here to here.